Hey guys, gals, friends, and pals, this is Paul Acevedo, and welcome to another episode of Saturday Game School, where we learn about a different game every Saturday of the year. Tonight, I'm joined on mic by Tyler. That's me. And we're going to play Riddled Corpses EX from Cowcat Games. It is available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Vita, of all things. Pretty it's rad. Not on Switch. It is not on Switch as of now, and also there is a Steam game, however, the Steam game is just called Riddled Corpses, and this one is apparently significantly enhanced over that one, so... And Cowcat isn't involved with the Steam version, so they just wanted us to focus on EX. Uh... Yeah, I think Cowcat's the publisher, right? And Diablo Diabolical Mind is the developer? Diabolical is the original... Tyler, I sent you that little interview I did with him. Hmm. I didn't on, know who it was with. On Skype. Yeah, but I didn't know. Was, did you say it was the Cowcat guy? Yeah, it was the Cowcat guy. I think you just said the guy, so I didn't know who it was. Yo, VX Latino! You're just supposed to know these things, Tyler. My bad. But no, he took the game, Riddle Corpse, the Steam game as it was, and he personally did 100% of the enhancements. Ah. Do you remember which game engine he developed it in? Yeah, like, the same one he used for his other games. But what is it? It's uh, like Game Maker Studio, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. Right on. And it took him about three months to do the whole improvement and porting process. But, like, again, he's a one-man developer, Cowcat Games. He did Demetrios, he did Xenon Valkyrie Plus. And it's impressive, when he ports a game, he personally improves it. You know, like Xenon Valkyrie Plus, I believe he did the enhancements on that, too, compared to the original. I like Yo, Xenon homie Drew. Valkyrie a lot. Hey everybody, welcome homie Drew. He's a longtime viewer and now he's been upgraded to moderator status. Hey homie Drew. Right on, and we believe he will be doing the contest, not this week, but very soon. Awesome. So here's our little intro. Ah! We're surrounded! This game supports two-player local co-op. I don't have a local co-op partner, which I bet would make it like way easier. But it's a nice feature. Yeah. And right I do on. think it's easier. I try to think if I played a little bit in share play, but now I can't remember. <laughs> That's true, Yup84. And you know, Yup, we still love you like a mod. It's just, like, from our mods, we need them to be here, like, almost every single week, and we need them to have regular, easy access to a computer. Those two things are very important. So, I played yep. one round of this. It looks like I can buy some upgrades, but they cost more than the amount of gold I've earned so far. Well, you better get some more gold. Yeah, it's too bad there's no online multiplayer, but you know, for a lot of indie games, the amount of time and money it would take to implement online multiplayer doesn't make sense. And, you know, like, players, they really harp on it. They're like, ugh, I would buy Overloaded if only it had online multiplayer, you know? Or whatever game. Overcooked is what I meant. But, you know, like, so many times it just doesn't make sense for the developer to do it, and it's kind of like, it's a little bit mean to ask them for it. You know, it's like, if only this game had cross-play multiplayer, and there's some good reason why it doesn't. Just, some you have to accept the reality of the situation sometimes, is what I'm saying, Tyler. I like online multiplayer, though. Oh yeah, I mean, online multiplayer is great. But just think of, like, some of these games are not going to make a lot of money, like, not necessarily this game, but a lot of these indie games, like, they may only ever take in $10,000, and you're like, okay, well, you're going to have to spend three months or six months adding online multiplayer, and it's not going to affect how much money the game makes, or it will barely affect it. Then it's not practical to actually implement it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I like online multiplayer. I'm not saying anyone should not like it. And you know, that's progress for you, Tyler, because you used to rail against multiplayer. Yeah, I was a loser back in the day. <laughs> You're all isolated alone in your basement. That's right. Now I'm on the main floor. <laughs> right on. Ah, uh, your weapon is weak. Yes, it really is. We blow up this car. Look, it sets everybody on fire. I like that effect. Yeah, it's cool. I think you see this game has a really nice pixel art style. I quite appreciate it. The one zombies kind of look like Stewie from Family Guy. Ha! Huh. Which ones would those be? The light green ones, they have a football shaped head. Oh yeah, you're right, when they're walking down they do. Yeah, when, you, when they're like facing the camera. Right on. Alright. 
So everybody's saying hi to BX Latino Heat. You know, BX Latino Heat, if you were a little a little more present, I'm sure you could... I mean, like, as far as Discord and stuff, you could probably be a mod, too. You just gotta let us know of your intentions. That's right, Dumbs. Even now I've had online multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, a lot of times adding online multiplayer to some random little indie game, it ends up being a loss for the developer. Like, I swear to you, this is true. Yeah, I like online multiplayer. Does Darwinia Plus have it, Tyler? You know that game you love so much? You talked about um, it at length last time. Does it even have co-op? Maybe it does have co-op. It does. I don't think it has online. It might on Steam. But remember how that game, they even porting it to Xbox Live Arcade at all was a financial loss for them. Yay, Webnoy, thank you! Oh, I died. Thanks to Webnoy's cheer, I got an emote. Woo! Did ever everybody got the emote? That's Very awesome. Nice. Thank you so much, Webnoy. Okay, let's upgrade some levels. By the way, this game has two different soundtracks. That's just how awesome Cowcat is. They added a new soundtrack to the game. The old soundtrack is good, too. So, what happens when I level him up, Tyler? Uh, his weapon gets stronger. You definitely want to level him up. Right on. Okay, I leveled him up a couple times, so that's going to make things easier. Yes, it will. <laughs> Webnoy is one of the best supporters of the stream, actually, and he's offered to write us like a a bot for us or something. He just wants to do it as a programming exercise. Nice. Yeah, and assuming that Icky and Brian agree to it, I think that would be really cool. This this stage map thing, it's sort of based on, I believe, ghouls and ghosts and ghosts and goblins, but it's neat. Yo, Chicago, glad you made it. How's the wifey tonight? Ooh, look at my gun, it's way better now. Right on. That's what we like to see. Okay, I do not know what you're talking about, Tyler. I am talking about left-leaning red black trees. Okay, is that an inside joke? It is a programming thing that I learned a couple weeks ago in my data structures and algorithms class. Oh, wow. So what are you going to do with the knowledge you gain from that class, Tyler? I don't know. <laughs> is it just to fulfill a requirement, or did you take it for a specific reason? For this specific class? Yeah. Or for like the whole thing. This um, class. This class is part of the, the associate's degree in software development. Gotcha. Is this going to be your first degree, Tyler? No. So what kind of degree do you already have? I have a master's in business administration degree. Master's? Whoa, I, I never knew you had a master's. That's crazy. Yeah. After So I got my bachelor's degree in... 2008, 2009, when the economy was really bad, the uh, job market was really bad. That's when I got my bachelor's. Everything was really bad, so yeah. I went right into grad school instead of looking for a job. Did you use student loans to do that, or how did you finance it? Well, I lived at home, which helped a lot. Um, so my mom helped with some. She paid one third, and I paid two thirds, and then I just worked uh, 29 hours a week. You know, she helps Not me probably. with a lot of things too, Tyler. My mom does? Oh, yeah. She's great. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, but I'm, I'm proud of you for getting a master's. That's really impressive. Thank you. I started yeah, the master's program at my college in Houston, University of Houston Clear Lake. And I was, you know, I was excited about it. But to be honest, that that's a 75 minute commute for me. And I was just burned out after doing it for, you know, two and a half years for my bachelor's. So Yeah. Yeah, mine it. was mine was about twelve minutes each way. Way better, yes. Yeah. And there's there's no easier way to make this particular drive, you know, like where I live on the way to that part of Houston, it's rough. It's one lane going in each direction for like a whole lot of the drive. And there's always some slow butthole who doesn't deserve to be driving, period just slowing down the whole lane, and it's so hard to pass him because there's only one lane each way, you know? Yeah, I finally beat that boss. Nice. Do you know how to use the no. dynamite? No, I don't. Tell me. Just a hand key, I think. This game does not have tutorials. Do I have buttons on the left side? Left... I just did left bumper and it did something weird. It froze everybody. What's that mean? No, the left side is the screen. Unless... I don't know. Oh, that was oh. must have been the, uh, the alternate button. Yeah, I have one yeah, dynamite. 
Yeah, and you, but you have two tight you still have two cloths, which frees things. Nice. Okay, yeah, so right bumper maybe would be the dynamite, is that no it's A, okay. I see, X and A, yeah. Alright, yeah, we'll try that before I die. Where's my life? Uh top left corner? I see like a meter, but it's a combo meter. I don't see life up there. I just see a uh, times um, one. Is there an actual life meter? I don't remember now. Maybe not. Hey, it's Stewie. I just killed Stewie. Oh, sorry, Dark Six. Yeah, you know, that's not too bad an idea, Dark Six. Sorry, Icky and I did not talk about what order we should do the prizes in, so, you know, it's just whatever he picked. So blame it all on him. Good old Lyle. I thought I like rented hearts or something for help, but I don't remember now. Yeah, I don't see him. Just froze everybody. That is a big help for getting away from that crowd of enemies I was just dealing with. Gotta collect the gold. It's so important. It's really fun so far, but I understand that it gets grindy after a while, Tyler. So grindy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have the developer's ear. I'm going to have to tell him, hey, developer, this is too grindy, but... The problem is, if it wasn't grindy, it would be, like, an hour and a half long. Yeah, so how do you... How do you account for that? I don't know. I guess throw in more randomized elements or something? Well, maybe even just more levels and adjust the difficulty tier. I mean, I know that that's not always the best idea either, because sometimes it just starts to get... Um, uh, draggy. You know, even if it was this, like, say 2 had barely distinguishable difficulty, as long as they had different looking environments, that still would really be a big help with variety, I think. Yeah. Oh, I just got a yes. life thing. See how much farther you're making it, just with that upgraded weapon? Like, okay. upgrade is huge for this game. It looks like you don't have an actual life meter, you just have lives. So once you use up your lives, you're out. You know, each hit is a life. Yeah, so. that sounds right. Yeah, I just got an extra life of medkit I picked up. Oh, just used the dynamite by mistake. Because <laughs> Rock Jones said to dodge, and so I was like, okay, I'll push A and see what that does. Yep. Oh, another boss. Definitely no dodge here. Yeah, Are this there... is... Oh, you're not quite to the boss boss. Oh, it's just a mini boss? Oh, no, that is the start of the boss boss, yes. Ah, there's more. No, there's two of those guys with the hoodies. I mean, yes, the it's... with the hats. They wear hats like I do, so I like that. But their hats aren't Sonic the Hedgehog hats, so I don't think they're nearly as cool as mine. Sorry. I can't believe they didn't put Sonic hats in this game. <laughs> Yet another developer who leaves such an obvious thing... ...out. That's right. Out! Just got hit trying to get that money. Oh god, kill this guy, kill him! He's about to die. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's a good point. Davida is, a. Uh... U.S. code, right? The Vita code? Yeah, North America only. It, I okay. mean, yeah, because no be Canadian. No swapping around Vita accounts the way you can with PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Sadly, no. Ones. Yeah, and even the Switch lets you change regions. Yes, it does. Just, just not the Vita. I mean, you can change it, but you're on a whole completely different account. You can't earn trophies on your main account or anything yeah. if you do that. And you have to, like, blitz your memory card or something. Yeah, so not a good idea on Vita. Yeah. Jono is from Australasia. Australia. Yeah, one of those places. Alright, we're doing okay on this boss. If I can keep having room to dodge. There's not a whole lot of room here. Oh god, now he's gonna... He got me. But I got a good amount of money. Bullet hell light. That's a fair way to say it, Simeus. Yeah, the bosses go into like bullet hell mode, but like the actual, well, in the later levels they have projectors, projectiles too, but it's not as like bullet helly where there's patterns and stuff except for versus the bosses. What well, something? You know, Icky, if you're not too set on the order, I would do an Xbox code next and then do a PS4 after that, or yeah, do a PS4 and Xbox for the last one. Don't you think that's a good idea, Tyler? Don't you only have one PS4 and one Xbox code? Or yeah, two Xbox codes? two Xbox codes. So I'm saying but do I just X. doing an Xbox code this run. Oh, I thought he only did Vita. I thought he did Vita and Xbox. No, no, no. Oh, because we're doing a Steam code for the last round. That's right. I was thinking we only have four total codes, but we have five. So I guess he knows what he's doing. Are you doing Steam for the last round? Usually we do the random Steam code we have. 
Oh, uh, okay, he's only cool. doing Vita. Okay, in that case, Icky, next one should be Xbox and maybe Steam. And the final one should be Xbox and PS4. Uh, that makes good Icky. sense to me. Icky knows what's up. See what happens when we try to question Icky. Because <laughs> we don't want these, these PlayStation gamers to not have anything to look forward to at the end of the stream, you know? That's right. Alright, so let's see how well my gun does now, guys. So again, this game does have a lot of doing the same level over and over. You, that's what you complained about in your review. Although you know, like it's okay to an extent. It's just when you have to do it for too long that that could get old. Right. Like you should probably be able to do it this time. I sure hope so. We're gonna just got an extra life too. So yeah, I can blow up the cars a lot faster, and the cars sometimes have good stuff in them. This is really fun so far, and with a friend in local co-op, it would be extra fun. Or if it was online, it'd be great too. <laughs> I suppose it would, Tyler. <laughs> why doesn't Why doesn't the developer just invest in a bunch of servers and write the netcode and constantly maintain it and all that stuff? It's like, geez. He is only one man, Tyler. That is why. One guy. Well, his whole job can be writing and maintaining the online infrastructure of Riddle Corpse's EX. Because I'm sure that'll that'll pay a living wage. <laughs> yeah, but um, I believe right now he's working on Riddle, Riddled Corpse's EXY, and so that's taking all his time. Sexy Riddled Corpses. Yes, those are the best kind. He's not actually doing that, but that is if they were to do a sequel, that so. would be the perfect name for it. You know, just put the Y at the end and don't say anything. Just let people figure it out on their own. I think he asked what's new about the EX version. That is a good question. You know, like, there's a blog post in... I think they announced it in April before it came out in May or something. And there was a blog post and it listed all the improvements. I think there's, like, new levels and characters and crap and all kinds of balance changes. But I don't remember. So... Who knows? If anybody has played the Steam original, then you can fill us in. Blow up all the cars. Gotta blow them up. Yeah. Dynamite! Some TNT dynamite, Tyler. From, uh, that one band? ACDC, AC isn't it? ACDC? Yeah. yeah, I think so. You know, I think ACDC would be a lot more popular, but apparently they refuse to license their music to certain kinds of things, so you barely hear them in movies and stuff, in commercials. Um, I don't know, I don't, they're not my favorite, but they played that song a lot at the, my local minor league baseball team, because they say oi really loud, and it, oi, 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 and it, yeah. yeah, it sounds kind of like they're saying Mike, and his name is Mike, and so the baseball player's name, so every time he came up to bat, they played ah, that. Interesting. You know what this game could use is a roll button. You know, like a dash or a roll. Yeah, I don't think there is one. That would be handy, recall. like just for you know, just to help with the dodging. It would add a little bit of depth to the game. <laughs> yeah, you know, four-player co-op would be a great thing to add to it if there was a sequel. Maybe, in the, maybe even that online multiplayer that Tyler so desperately craves. That's right. I would have played another hundred hours. And bought like hundred dollars <laughs> worth of microtransactions. I'm sure. Oh man! If only they, you know, then it was very short-sighted to leave it out, wasn't it? So short-sighted. Yeah. Just think about the costumes you could put on your player that you can barely see with the bullets flying everywhere, <laughs> and he's constantly flashing one color or another. That actually wouldn't be such a bad thing. I mean, you know, like one of the most fun things about that road trip game. What was the road trip game we played? Uh, Death, Death Road. Road Canada. Yeah, Death Road. Did you ever get around to playing it, Tyler? Didn't you win a copy? Uh, no, I have not had a chance to play it yet. God, Tyler. I know. I've been busy with Mighty Number no. 9. Oh, well, that's obviously a priority. The, the, the quintessential. <laughs> and Much better and game. It's actually way better than... Like, I think the people that hate on it never played through the whole thing. Like, I mean, it's not worth all the hype it got and it has its issues but it's like it's fun it's challenging it looks significantly worse than the original kickstarter video and that is a strike yes, against yeah, it the, never yeah it's away. ugly it's ugly the voice acting is awful the story is terrible like just play it on mute and 
play the actual game and enjoy the <laughs> game. Right on. Thyrenia says something's hella fun. Which game are you talking about? Thyrenia Death Road or or what? Mighty Number no. Nine? It can't be Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> I only played it for half an hour and I got to that one boss who, I told you Tyler, I don't think telegraphs his attacks properly. But I was it's streaming gotta, while playing it's gotta it. has got to be the fire boss, not the intro level boss, because no. he's easy. You know, maybe you're right, I, I don't remember. literally jump over him a couple times and you beat him. I put the video on YouTube so people can see what I'm talking about. I'll look it up. Death Road she's talking about, hella fun. Oh, that's so good to hear that you liked it. Yeah. Annoyingly hard, and it's not just me. What's your YouTube called? Possibly, right? I mean, you can search by that. If you put that in the search term, it will come up in the video. Okay. Well, some places your EastX, and some places your EastX Twitch, and some places your Paul Acevedo. Yeah, uh, I don't remember. Like, the way YouTube does URLs is kind of confusing. I think SegaCon might be in the URL, but I'm not 100% sure. Yep, this gun just tears him up. Die, fool. Congratulations to the winner who won it. I'm not watching your video. <laughs> Oh, Tyler, always watching my videos. There's a whole lot of bait and switch. <laughs> what do you mean? For Mighty Number no. 9. Oh. Yeah, way too much. Perhaps not intentionally, but they dropped the ball, whatever happened. This is Simeus one. Congrats, Simeus. And they were trying to fund a little anime based on it with like a different name than Mighty Number no. 9, and that didn't go anywhere, did it? And then Mighty Number no. 9 appears in that weird Mega Man 2D platformer. I don't even know if it's from the same developer or not. The same one that has yeah, the Gal Gun um, version. The Gal Gun, yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah, I want to play that one. It looks cool. It does look cool. Achievement! Yes! Story Stage 1. Simi oh. is saying it is cross by. Uh, it really didn't look like it was on the PlayStation Store. That's cool, yeah, you if so. You beat the intro boss right away. It was the fire boss that you had a hard time with. Okay, the first, thank you. Like the first of the eight. He sucked. Uh, oh boy. He machine sucked. bosses. Yeah, he was one of the later ones I beat. Like I mean, in, in like in any Mega Man game, there's usually a couple bosses that are easy enough to beat with just your main blaster, and then there's some that really almost require, you know, until you get really, really, really good, they require the special weapon. Fair point, Tyler. Fair point. And I did not use a guide when I was doing that, so that explains it. Yeah, Dark Six, I, I stand corrected. On those games. So this game is cross by on Vita and PS4. Nice. Yeah. So good news for whoever won it on the Vita. Yeah. Especially since probably a few people who had PS4s didn't enter because they don't have Vitas. <laughs> Sucks to be them. But... That's right. I mean, whoever has a Vita probably also has a PS4, to be honest. Right. I was saying you could go for it on PS4 and just not have it on Vita. But it's better for someone who has a Vita to win. Yeah, that was the point of it. We, we wanted a Vita person, a owner, to have that pleasure, and now they get it. Fabrice Breton. Is that his name? Yeah, that's the name of the developer, Cowcat Games. Really, yeah. really nice guy. He's been... You know, I mean, he gave us codes for Demetrios, for Xenon Valkyrie Plus. He's just been so great to us. Yeah, it says right here, purchasing this content entitles you to both the PS4 and the PS Vita systems. How did I not notice that? Because on the left, where it says the platform name, it doesn't say both on the left. That yeah, must it be does what, not. That's what confused me. So we're finally on the second stage. How do I go buy upgrades? I don't want to buy items because they're single use. That's a way. So there's you don't want to buy items until you've got everything upgraded. Eventually they're like, like because imagine you can buy nine health and then all of a sudden you're like stocked up for health, so they're good to like when you get to the end of the game just be able to beat it. Um, but obviously you ah. want to buy permanent upgrades first. Right on. Ah, Skullhead, you had this screenshot in your review, as a matter of fact. Yeah, the Skullhead guy. Right on. He's pretty annoying. Hopefully. Go ahead. It's good looking. I mean, this game has great pixel art, I yeah, would say. Yeah, the pixel art is pretty good. As we say, hopefully there wasn't any reading quizzes on here. 
any of the certification tests you took recently, if you missed it. <laughs> Dark news. Yeah, I guess we should talk about that. You know, it's in the newsletter, and I hope everyone reads the newsletter. You know, like Bums and Simeus and George, I hope you guys all actually read the newsletter. Because I know our most dedicated regular viewers do. Whoa, I just heard a good sound. Thank you for the subscription, Webnoy. You are awesome. Webnoy, one of our very best supporters. Thank you, Webnoy. Yes, and I got hit because I was looking at that, but that's alright. And did we, get, worth it. did we get Thyrenia's cheer? Thanks her for that as well. Oh, wow. Way to go, Thyrenia. No, I missed that. That's excellent. Yeah. What a nice lady. Is Wolf Blade here tonight, Thyrenia? I forgot to say hi to him if he is. Sub hype word. Yeah, no, guys, I took two teaching exams this week. That's why I only just now, yes, only just last night did I beat Slime Slot, even though I love that game so much. Because I was busy studying. And it's hard to move and talk, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, now we'll do an upgrade. What do we got? Yeah, so I took my English... No, I took... first one was Pedagogy, which is your general teaching certification, and that is required to be a full-level teacher, so I got that out of the way. And I passed! I made a 92! So, that's pretty cool, right, Tyler? Oh, he's stuck that's at work. Very cool. And besides that, I also took my English as a second language exam, and that one I don't know if I passed or not, because it was super hard, and there were questions that were not on any of the study materials, which is not fair. You know, like, terms that were not on it. I can't... Was part you know, of it like, for Spanish? Like, did you have to learn a lot of Spanish words for it? No, you, you know, there is no question about Spanish or any other language. It is all about, like, how you deal with a student who doesn't speak English. So they could be, like, German or French or anything, you know? Okay. Let's change soundtracks just to hear the classic music. It's NES sounding music. It's good though. 92 out of 100. Technically it's 278 out of 300, but that equates to a 92. A minus. <laughs> a minus word. Just barely though. 93 is an A. Maybe 94 is an A. Is yeah. Right there? You're right. And you know, like, um, the smartest girl in my class, my certification class, she made two points higher, so she would have gotten a 94, I believe. And I only made a 92, you know, being presumably the smartest guy in my class. And so, she's, you know, like, she's my friend. She's my best friend out of the group, but she is my rival. So I was a <laughs> little sad that she did slightly better than me, but that's okay. You know, as long as I did the best out of the guys, good enough. Yeah, I had a rivalry, rivalry with my younger cousin um, in regards to education stuff he was really bright too oh nice yeah i mean it's fun it encourages you to try a little harder and to be more invested in the outcome tech guy asks if she's cute well you know she is older like my wife she's actually probably slightly older than my wife she doesn't say but i bet she's like a couple years older but she is pretty and you know just like i find intelligence very attractive oh no thank you lyle we will get your replacement code who i don't know who won but winner, we will get you a replacement code. You know, like, we we don't usually test the codes before we give them out because we just trust the developer, but sometimes they pick the wrong code by mistake. No, I did not ask how old she is, but, I mean, we're Facebook friends and we chat and stuff. You know, like, we stay in touch. She's married and she has a couple of full-grown kids. You know, I have one full-grown kid, so we're not that different there. And I'm also married, so lots in common. But what, what really impresses me about her, besides just being smart, is that she's from Germany, so she speaks German. She also speaks English, Spanish, and French fluently, all of them. And, wow. yeah, that's just amazing. So, yeah. I mean, somebody, you know, the more languages you learn, apparently that's really good for your ability to learn and stuff, you know? Like, it's just really good for your cognitive development. And that's an advantage I did not have as a kid. You know, I didn't learn Spanish until high school, because unfortunately my parents didn't teach me. And they should've. Oh, so those little electric things hurt you? Uh, oh, man. The fences? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I totally dropped the ball. Okay, remember that the fences hurt you, Paul. I'll do that. Can I upgrade anything? Do I have enough? No, I don't. All right. Let's just do that again, but do it right this time. Yeah, Lyle, I don't have a whole lifetime to dedicate to learning Chinese. You know, having having one of my best friends speak it certainly would be an encouraging factor. But, 
Especially, you know what annoys me about Chinese is how they have like five different ways to say every little sound, and that actually affects what the word is and crap. Like, that's not... that's annoying. You know, like Japanese, how... also, Japanese and Chinese both use kanji, you know? And kanji is really freaking annoying. Like, it makes me angry when I think about it. So if I was gonna learn... but they make different sounds in Chinese and Japanese. There's a lot of reasons why it wouldn't be practical to learn Chinese, but I do love languages, and I would learn more languages if I could. You know, the one I really wanted to learn besides Japanese, which I know some, is Polish. Because there's a lot of really cool Polish game developers, and I was... I don't know if you remember, Tyler, but I used to do some translation work for a, po a Polish developer, just some editing and stuff. I remember you did that, but I didn't know for who. I don't, I mean, I don't remember for who. That company is not around anymore, so it doesn't, you know, like, it wouldn't do it any good to tell everybody. Their name was Frugishman, uh -huh. though. But they, it's because my friend Marina, who lives in San Francisco, and we haven't talked in a few years, but for a while we were really close friends. Um, she, yeah, she worked for them, and she introduced me to the owner of the guy, and man, he took us to this Japanese restaurant, and the food was so freaking good. It was amazing. And so I had some nice times with them, and I enjoyed doing work for them, but they kind of asked me to do things that were beyond my ability level, and that was really frustrating and time-consuming. It's so, like they asked you to, like, stand on one foot and pat your head while you hop? Well, like, they knew that I had an educational background, because they were an educational-oriented app developer. And that's fine. But what wasn't fine is they... Like, for a while, they were just wanting me to translate their little learning objectives and stuff, and that was fine. But eventually, they wanted me to just come up with my own. And it was actually... it was too hard, you know? Like, I've mentioned it before, but I'm not good at making lesson plans and stuff. And plus, they would be, like, really specific and picky about them. And, I, again, very, very time-consuming and not worth the amount of money they offered. So, but like, right at first when it was just proofreading things and making sure the English was good, that was really enjoyable. Oh man, I keep getting hit. You know, at this point I might earn more money on the first level, I'm not really sure. Because, like, there's just so much chaotic stuff going on, and I'm, right. I'm buzzing. I'm trying to think. Yeah, you kind of ha I do think that I actually did play the first level several more times to grind. Because you kind of like die at the midpoint of the second level, yeah. and the coins, like eventually the, the amount of gold you get does increase, like the fourth level is the level that you'll end up grinding over and over again. Ooh. Um, but, like, I do remember the second level not being terribly generous. Thank you for waiting, we are back, we're gonna try out local co-op and see how that does. We're gonna do the first level again, just earn some money. We got the classic soundtrack on. Remind me to switch to the new soundtrack after this. Switch to the new soundtrack after this. Right on. It's a twin stick shooter, you just fire with the right trigger. We have items that X and A button use, but just let me handle them. Oh, Sorry. you're in co-op? Yeah, local co-op. There we go. And those are your lives in the top corner. You, you lose a life every time you get hit, so don't get hit. And the enemies drop gold, and gold is very important, so always go get the gold. You know, Tyler, I've been playing a game on my phone that just came out. It's Star Ocean Amnesia. And it's not Amnesia, it's Amnesia because Japanese people are silly. And it's just a new mobile Star Ocean game. It's actually quite a lot like Final Fantasy Record Keeper, which I know Royal Bob plays, and I used to play a lot. Have you heard anything about it? Me? Yeah. You, no. T-Dog. No. Well, basically, the way it goes... Oh no, those are your items, Ethan, so you can use them when you want, but just save them for bosses. Dynamite damages everything, and X freezes the enemies for a little bit. The clock. Yeah, anyway, what was I saying? So, the way it works is you can... You can summon enemies. You know, it's got a gotcha system, which is a random draw system. You know, like a loot boxes or whatever. You can summon en characters who will join your team, and they're from all the different Star Ocean games. I've never played a Star Ocean game, so none of that stuff matters to me very much. And it's kind of silly that I'm even playing this game at all, considering it's for fans of Star Ocean, you know? But it is a fun game, and supposedly people who play a lot of these games say that the, like, the, 
the odds of getting something good from the random draws are actually better than other games of this type. It has really good 3D graphics for the battles, because it's mostly battles and a little bit of, like, story stuff. And, I don't know. If you're one of my Facebook friends, such as Thyrenia, and you like this kind of game, then you should give it a shot and we should be friends in the game. But I don't think I'll play it forever. I think I'll just play it for a while. You know, that's how all these free-to-play games are, where they're really just about, like, going through the content and then you hit some kind of grinding wall. You know, it's like you play them until you get to that point and then you have to give it up. Is it free-to-play? Yeah, free-to-play. But, I mean, the premium currency that you can buy, they actually give you a ton of it. Like, just for every time you... Oh, here's the real special feature of the game, is it has real-time online multiplayer. So it's not like, well, you can use somebody else's <clears throat> character in your party, that's a feature of the game. But you can actually, online at the same time as other people, play battles. And so that kind of... it adds a little special something. There's no actual chat, though. Oh. But, uh, you know, I kind of forgot what my point was. Uh, ah. You're saying that Spelunky is the best game ever. Oh, easily. Yeah, instead of playing Star Ocean Amnesia, just play Spelunky. Mm -hmm. And Spelunky is getting a sequel. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, Just like Overcooked. Yeah, Overcooked is going to have online. Yeah, that's really great. It, and they can do that because the first game made enough yeah, money to prove. One, exactly. Yeah. It's not like they knew that the first one was going to be a runaway hit, otherwise they probably would have had online in it originally. Yeah, and thank goodness it was. And, you know, like launching without a feature and then the sequel has the feature, that, that's not a bad formula. It even worked for State of Decay, State of Decay 2, didn't it? Uh, what did it add? Oh, online. That's right. Yeah, first online one The first one didn't have online. They well because they talked about having online in the first one for so long. I just figured that eventually it got patched in, but I forgot that it never did actually get patched in. Yeah, I mean the first game obviously just should have had it. It's one of those games where like the the lack of multiplayer is kind of it feels like something's missing. Yeah. But it was a good game anyway. Yeah, I like the first one a ton. I spent a lot of time with the first one. Nice. And Ethan points out that Agents of Mayhem really could have used some online multiplayer. Oh yeah, that game's so boring by itself. But I mean, you can't really do much else. I don't think it's, it's just—it's just very generic. It is generic. It's fun though. Like the actual gameplay is pretty tight, don't you think? It's okay. I thought the gunplay wasn't very good. Sorry, Ethan. Okay. I keep stealing all the lives. The superhero stuff was kind of cool. The stuff. Oh. Yeah. yeah I mean, like. It has its ups and downs, but uh, I don't think it should have bombed the way it did. Just agents of Mayhem. <laughs> they could have capitalized on the Saints Row connection a little more, and maybe just had a little bit more stuff that people would expect from the Saints Row game in it. Yeah, I mean, some of that game's sense of humor, for instance, because Agents of Mayhem doesn't have nearly as much of a sense of humor. Oh wow, this is a lot easier with another person, guys. Of course, I have leveled up some too, but we're doing quite well, I think. You can use your freeze. Oh, okay. That explains it. Get all that gold! Go team! His foot is not on camera, is it? I don't think it is. I don't know why Icky said that. I mean, oh, you could see... Yeah, he's asking who is playing second player, and because Icky just said, oh, it's <laughs> Paul's toe playing. No, of course not. <laughs> yeah, Paul's thumbs can't even play that well, let alone his toe. Sometimes I talk a little too fast, I understand. I mentioned West X, Ethan is playing as my co-op partner. So, is this story any good, Tyler? I think I skipped it. Yeah, but I did show it off on camera more than once. So, uh, yeah, I no, I think, it, I think it was pretty damn silly. They're like a special agent, so like Resident Evil style agents, like 
they're going into these different destructed areas and okay. clearing out zombies and stuff. So that's kind of like the story background, but I don't think I paid too much attention gotcha. to it. For sure. Uh, but yeah, I haven't gone back to that game, Ethan, and I should. You know, like, a lot of times I'm too busy. I'm still reviewing games, I just don't get paid for it as often. Have I mentioned how much I get paid for reviewing games at Co-Optimus? I'm probably not allowed to say. It's not professional to say. It's less than half as much as what I made at Windows Central, though. But any money is nice, Tyler. It's nicer than doing it for free like you do, heathen. I do get paid, but just not very much. Oh, okay. I will have to compare numbers later, then. I got a $10 Amazon gift card. Really? For real? Yep. That's oh. not what I get every month. Well, you know. I'm not complaining. That's not bad. Yeah. So it's not by title, it's just by month? So it's by how many Ow. clicks or whatever. Um, so I've gotten a little bit more than that on months when I have a bunch of reviews. Ah. Um, but usually it's right around 10 bucks a month. And I hope everybody knows that Tyler reviewed this game and you need to go read his review and leave a positive comment on it. That's how you do it, guys. That's right. Icky's been posting it for sure. Good man, Icky. Yeah, I mean, we make a point of it. It really helps us out. Those clicks are important. And we can say that, and yes, 90% of the viewers just ignore what we're saying. I don't know how they justify that in their hearts, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, our viewers are the worst. <laughs> Punks. Uh, except for Webnoy and Jono. Tyrania is pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah, she is great. Simeus is pretty terrible. <laughs> what about Van Hoffman and XOXO? What would you say about him? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't remember him. Remember that bot that won the... Oh yeah, that was so funny. Won the code last time, and then just kept entering. <laughs> that was silly. Dark Six, we like you too, sorry. We like you all, as a matter of fact. We do wish you all would leave comments and read the articles like we always ask every single week. You know, that's just... That's the difference between... Le but then again, the money is more important than reading the articles, isn't it? So, who knows? If you want to just give us money, just give us money. We'll accept that. Here's the thing about Simeus. Is he thinks he's cool at trophies. Yeah? But he's not as cool as me when it comes to trophies. I have more <laughs> than him. How many more do you have? I mean, like, what level are you to? So he's the closest guy to me. Um, I don't know what he is. Probably, like, mid-40s. Hmm. And then... I'm at 49, so he's the closest to me on true trophies, which is like true achievements. Yeah. Um, so I actually don't know, like he could actually be quite a bit behind me in real trophies because he has way more platinum trophies than me, so his like rarity is a lot higher than mine. Ah. But I think, so. but his like total true trophy score is the closest to me because he has lots of platinums. Interesting. So is there no way to get through those fences without getting hit? Yeah, yeah just, don't walk just in ignore those things at the top. I don't know why they did it like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame. There should be some way around them. Yeah, good luck, everybody. We do love you all. Simia says you've been cheating. What have you been cheating with, Tyler? I haven't been cheating at all. Oh. I'm, I've, I've been playing awesome games like oh, Mighty God. Number 9 and Risk of Rain, which doesn't even have a platinum trophy. We earned a good amount of money on that. Trophies are awful. Okay, let's up. When do we up unlock a new character? And do we even want to do that, or do we want to keep leveling up this guy? You have to buy new characters. Um, oh, I see. This one. Yeah. 2,000, that's too much. Let's just keep leveling this guy up. Alright. Yeah, I, I would level him all the way up before you buy someone else. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, so Bum says Simeus is really good at the Platinums. Yeah, he Here's the new soundtrack. <laughs> He only has usually like one game that he's like has a hundred percent completion on PlayStation, it's pretty ridiculous. He just yeah. does one game at a time no matter what, in other words, right? Um he will do a couple games at a time once in a while. Yeah. And then like once in a while he won't buy the DLC right away, so it affects his achieve or his completion stats a little bit. Here we go. Um but yeah, he's usually just working on one game and that's the only game that's removing him from hundred percent. You know, Lyle was telling me I should do that, not about like trophy and achievement completion, but just about like playing style, because that's Lyle's playing style. But you know me, I like to have about three or four games going at once if I can. Oh yeah, that would drive me insane. The other thing is that trophies and achievements, like, 
if you're not gonna, and I don't know how selective Simeus is, he definitely plays hard games, um, but like, if you're gonna try to do that, you have to pay attention to the trophies and achievements before you play the game, like, why, if you weren't that big on Gears of War, you could never start up Gears of War, because like, that one achievement takes like, what, 500 uh, hours or something? Yeah, I mean, you're right, there's a lot of games you would just have to avoid playing, and so you actually right. lose out by being that way. Right. But, but a lot of, I mean, not a lot of people, but some people are that way. Yeah, so like, I would pretty good about it. Uh, like, he plays, he definitely doesn't just skip hard games. That's good. Yeah, like, I mean, there have been a few times in my life, times occasionally an achievement or something will really offend me about a game that I'm sort of on the fence about, but if I wanted to play that game, then I would play that game. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I don't, like, usually, like, I'm getting more and more, for, like, I find myself not playing games that don't have platinum trophies more and more, because, like, it's ridiculous for games just not to all have platinum trophies. Um, so that's why you skipped Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Yeah, can you believe that I didn't have a platinum trophy? <laughs> totally ridiculous. totally ridiculous. ridiculous. There's no way Mega Man X Collection's gonna have one either, I would guess. Yeah, shame on Capcom. What? I mean, what do they think they're benefiting by doing that? What is? Yeah, who wins? It. I don't. Maybe they just don't understand that the appeal of trophies. Like, it's, it's gotta not be. a huge group of people that chases achievements and trophies. Don't but there's tro always like, a few platinum. extra cells that, like, if you have a easy game and you have a platinum or a easy hundred percent, you always get a few extra cells. To yeah. Trophies. So, like, I don't get. Trophies. Yeah, I mean, you're and you're losing a few cells by not having the platinum. It's like, why would yeah, you just exactly. choose to lose you're a few cells? Yourself a little bit. Resident Evil Four doesn't even have a platinum. Um, oh man, and yeah, yeah, and that's a game that would take you like 30 hours to hours, do everything, yeah. yeah. And I think it needs two uh, playthroughs for, it does. The, for the 100%. Yeah, which is one reason why I didn't 100% it on Xbox 360. Right, well, I, I, think I, every, I think I got everything, but uh, I didn't play the Ada campaign, because it's a good game, but it's a long game, like I was done with it by the time I beat it. Um, but I got all the other trophies besides that one, and then the second playthrough trophy. So, Simeus says that the new Wolfenstein has a really brutal platinum. What's so brutal about it, I wonder? Yeah, there's a... I don't know how hard it ended up being, but there was a, a couple or one really strict... trophy. I like, did not like the trophy... I mean, the achievements in regular Wolfenstein, the new order, or whatever it's called, you know? Like, uh, so the if first they're even... Yeah, if they're even worse than that, that's not good for me. But I still would play I it, because everyone loves it. I think the game is having slow down, Brian. It does slow down from time to time when there's a lot of zombies on the screen. Yeah, sorry about that, you guys. Uh, right now our donation goal is a green screen, and apparently that hasn't been very compelling for our viewers so far, but I, I do think we need to go for the green screen first. But we had a really big donation goal, which was the PlayStation 4 Pro. We got about $100, but it didn't seem to motivate the viewers the way smaller goals do. But did I mention, guys, that if we got a new green screen, that the stream would look better and it would be better for everybody? Because that's the thing. What's the really bad achievement? But like, what does it require you to do in uh, the new Wolfenstein 2? Yeah. yeah, let us know. Yeah, because I do remember reading about it, but I forgot what it was. I'm sure it's not like a no damage one, because that would be impossible. Way to go, Sirloin Steaks. I hope we have you on the mailing list, or we're about it's to get you on it. Stay high to your bot. Okay, go through the fences. Yeah, this level has more of a maze element, since you have to dodge the fences. It's interesting. Yeah, a little bit. So play the whole game on the hardest difficulty without dying. That doesn't sound fun. That's seriously what it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's gotta be rough. Yeah. I don't enjoy so, that. And it, like, like we're saying, it's a small population that is like super into completions and trophies. But why alienate any population? <laughs> yeah. You know, all you're doing is hurting cells yourself, even if it's a small amount. You know, every cell counts. Yeah. Like, what's the bit? Like, every achievement you add to a game should make it better, not worse. You know. Right. So when you have a when you have one that nobody could possibly like, like you're not serving the game or anyone. Yeah, like this, well, you know, like, the serious achievements, as long as they keep them more reasonable, it's not so bad, but they're usually pretty ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, they're usually like 500 to 1,000 hours or something. 
Yeah, it's not cool. Like, I mean, and, and I, like, and probably back in the early Xbox days, like, you bought Gears of War, even Gears of War 2, and, like, you could play it for six months, and that's all you play. But now, like, 30 there's, games is about a week. Yeah, there's so many more games, and so many more of them have online multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Ah, dang it. We're, oh, Ethan just died. Okay, but we, I think we got pretty good money. He's got one life left, I've got one left. There's the skull again, it's a different skull this time. Use your dynamite. More of that bullet hell stuff you guys were talking about. Oh, you're heading to the second box, man. Yeah, is that what this is? Yeah. Ah, it's hard. We got him halfway down. Oh, God. This is a really fun game, you guys. You know, it does have the grindiness that Tyler talked about, but if you enjoy the core gameplay, you'll probably get a lot of playtime out yeah, of it. Yeah, the first couple hours are pretty fun. And then... Keep it! If you want to, like, get all the way through it, then it starts to drag. But, like, the first two or three hours are pretty good as you're getting used to it. Woo! We did it! I could not have done that without my partner. It would have taken more nice. tries. So bring along a friend if you want to speed up the process a little bit. So and this does have a platinum trophy too, which is nice. Right on. Unlike the more expensive Street Fighter Anniversary Collection, because this game's right. only $12! That's right. Street Fighter Anniversary is 30 and has 12 games and <laughs> has 12 trophies. Yeah, it's ridiculous. By the way, I forgot to talk about it much, but we saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, and it was really fun. Tyler, you should go see it. I didn't like the first Ant-Man. So really? weird. You didn't like it? So I thought it was weird. pretty funny. Yeah. This it's one, too weird for me. This one's actually funnier and more creative. You know, like, the first one had uh, div the director coming in with, like, real late in the process because they fired the, you know, the original director. They do that a lot in Marvel movies, seems like. Well, it, it's happened a couple times, but, I mean, it even happened in Star Wars. It happened in Justice League. It It's not 100% unusual. So, I mean, it's a thing that... Oh, nice. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking about Star Wars, not Marvel. Yeah. No, I, I thought Ghost was pretty neat. Ethan didn't like her. But her abilities were cool, but they did literally she was a, nothing with her. I mean, she was in a lot of good fight scenes. Whenever she was around, they had some pretty fun fights. She wasn't... No, she wasn't intimidating, but she's supposed to be sympathetic. Not that we want to, like, spoil it for everybody. But, like, the... I mean, like... It's just a fun, rollicking action heist movie. Like, it is... There's not a lot of thematic depth or anything, but there is a lot of... We're going to try out this new level, even though we're going to be too under-leveled to do it. Yeah, oh, well, this is crazy. But anyway... Yeah, yeah, we're in vehicles. Yeah, this isn't a very... Like, I mean, this is... You'll be playing 1 and 2 for a while. Gotcha. Get through 3. It's just really hard to, like, collect coins, because they zoom past you real quick. Yeah, they do. Dang. Yeah, it's not a good grinding level, so... I'll hit the fences. It's kind of cool that it's a little bit different, which is nice, but it's not very good for grinding. Yeah, and that's that's a bad idea for a level period, because that means you're only going to play it until you beat it, and then never again. Exactly. So now you're you're starting to get... And, and it won't take way too long to get strong enough to beat this level, um, but it'll take a little while of playing levels 1 or 2, whichever you want, to start grinding it. Let's go back to level 2, Ethan. We'll do this one again, like, for our final try. 16 minutes. Alright. Alright, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna go back to stage two because we want to earn more money so we can level up a little more. But here we go. Our guns are stronger. We're gonna do fine. What is the level cap, Darker Player asks. Do you know, Tyler? 20. Okay. So you're getting pretty close. You're yeah. getting pretty close with the main guy. And then we'll have to buy a new character and start it all over again. Yep. Yes, you will. Right on. And there are how many characters, Tyler? Six. Six characters. Are they a lot different from each other? Yeah, so one character has double health. Like, what do you start with? Three health? Wow. One of them starts with six. He's really pretty good um, until you get really good at the game. One is double gold, thank god. Like, I mean, that's the one you basically have to use when you uh, get into yeah. the diving. And that's the fourth um, character? Or which character? Uh, you can buy her, all I remember. Um, and then one of the one of them has... I think the only thing she has is a turret, which is really not very good or something. Starts with a turret. One of them's... yeah. 
Um, and then the fifth character, which you get by maxing out the second, third, and fourth characters all to level 20, has all three of those gold wow. and health. And then that's the one you basically will need to unlock to beat the game unless you're really good. That's the one I had to unlock and level up before I could actually beat the game. So you basically have to level up three characters to level 20 to unlock this character and then get her to level 20, and then you'll be in a position where you're strong enough to beat the game. Yeah, those are some steep requirements, aren't they? Well, grindy. The other option is, like I said, to just buy a whole bunch of items when you're somewhat leveled up and go for it, but then that's a lot of money if you don't make it because like, yeah. the items are all one-time use. What a big risk. Yeah, exactly. So that's, I mean, I did it the slow but more guaranteed way where I leveled up the fifth character to level 20 and then bought some items and then... I mean, it was still fairly challenging the last level, but it was never too bad because I had like nine health to start with, so... Nice! Yeah. Uh, oh, what's that sound? I love that sound! Thank you for the subscription! Who just subscribed? Sirloin Sir Steaks? Steaks? Wow, that's it's great, Sirloin! Loin. Thank you! First time subscribing, I believe, and we really appreciate it, man. Like, we love your support. Yeah, you know, guys, dedicating every... Basically, like, almost every single Saturday of my year. Every now and then I'll have a, a substitute. But dedicating my Saturdays to this is a lot of time and effort. And, you know, sometimes my relatives and my wife even will not understand. And they'll be like, Paul, why don't you just take off? And it's like, I usually will not do that because I love you guys and I want the stream to be as good and reliable as it can be. So thank you so much for supporting us in any way you can. Not to mention the time and effort involved in getting prizes to give out during the stream. And we do that because, you know, we love these games and we want as many people to be able to experience them as possible. And thankfully, in this case, Tyler had already experienced it since he reviewed it. That's right. But it was really cool of Cowcat Games to allow us to do this stream. And, you know, in the other games they did, all three of the games that we've done of theirs have been pretty fun, actually. Next week, what game are we streaming? It's another zombie game. Yeah, it's that Xbox um, indie game one that got converted to a full game or something, right? Is that the one that's next week? I thought it was a different oh, one. Maybe not. I could be wrong. I don't know. I didn't I think, recognize it. I think it's Deadhead Zombie Warfare, which is a port of a mobile game. Ah. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, that particular game next week, I don't want to discourage anyone, but, you know, like... Some people don't love this game as much as other games. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how we feel about it, won't it? That's funny, Brian says he'll skip a stream if he's slightly hungry. <laughs> what the heck, Brian? Now he's starting to sound like that guy who, uh, who unfollowed and left the Discord server. The guy who oh, no, met he's... it in person. Oh, really? Yeah, it was Cecil Kilmer. Oh, yeah. No, he means his own stream. Like when Brian's like his oh his oh right, I think Wednesdays and Saturdays. Yeah, I and mean, he, when he has a hangnail, he's like, hey, I'm not <laughs> I got this hangnail. I got to take care of. Well, because lately I only do Saturdays, and you know I would like to do more midweek ones, but it hasn't been possible because of like my teaching stuff, you know. But because we only have one day a week, I want to actually be there for it, and also because we have so many streams lined up, and I don't want to like push the schedule back. I'd rather really move forward if possible. But yeah, I remember Cecil Kilmer. Yeah, you know, like he's a nice enough guy. He would often miss like watching streams because of dinner or something. It's like why not just eat before or after, dude? But I mean, besides that, he he just kind of left our community. You know, he just completely left it. And I was sad because we met in person and stuff, and we, you know, like, normally that would kind of increase somebody's loyalty to the stream. What about uh, the other guy? He hasn't been around. Light Cycle? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, Light Cycle. Yeah, also known as No Time for Games. Yes, that guy. And I think that some, that may have something to do with the fact that he and my ex girlfriend were talking, you know? I think that may have hurt his loyalty to some extent. Ah. But I, I don't believe they... I don't know, but I don't believe they have any plans to meet up again. I mean, we all met one time. But. Right. He was cool, I liked him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I mean, 
it was and meeting him in person was really fun. And you know, he never had I never had any opposition to him and her dating if they were gonna do that. But because it's so long distance it's not really practical. <laughs> yeah, Brian said Cecil Kilmer met you and you're like, Oh, I'm not gonna follow this guy anymore, he's terrible. We had a good time and I was nice to him. Sure, it must have been something you did. Yeah, let's skip that. Okay, good job. Uh, do we want to do the... I really feel like we should do one more before we do the racing one, because we're just not built up enough. Yeah, the racing level's not... Oh, but we don't have a choice. Well, let's just do the yeah, racing one. Quick. Die. Come on. Alright. Uh, yeah, Lyle, Lyle was pointing out that he would get offended with us for asking... Whoa! Thank you for the donation, Webnoy! Awesome! Yes, finally, we're on the road to getting a new green screen! You die super quick in that one. Do you only have one life for it? Is that what it is? Uh, no, you have three lives. Well, I mean, I think you have as many lives as you maybe beat the last level with. So if you start it Woo! fresh, you would have three. And Jono, too! Jono, thank you so much, guys. Like, yeah, having a proper green screen, not this beat-up do-it-yourself one that we had for two or three years, but a proper professional quality green screen is going to make a big difference for the stream and, and it'll be cool because I don't, I don't like having the background to be honest. I know some people don't mind it, but it'll be better without it. Alright, let's let's just do this one a, again a couple times, Ethan, since it's like 30 seconds. We're level 17 out of 20, Pusha. Why does Bumslai say stink cork? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what what's that stupid character from Bums. He's fascinated by this character from something that that emits a bad smell. There we go. Pit oh, from Masters of the Universe. There was a, yeah. Like, that, is that what it is? There was a stinky character, and it was really silly. And they even had like a doll or something that would like they made it smell bad or something, which That's just crazy. sounds awful. You can barely get any gold. That's so annoying. Let's at least try to survive the first wave, that would be nice. I wonder, how many waves are there, do you remember, Tyler? It's a fairly short level, at least. Um, they said it's from He-Man, not Masters of the Universe. That's the same thing, Tyler. <laughs> oh. Yeah, see, He-Man is the main character of Masters of the Universe. Oh, yeah, see, I never... Like, I mean, I kind of watched Transformers, and I watched a ton of Ninja Turtles, but nice. I never saw Masters of the Universe. Yeah, you're a few years behind it, because, like, it was huge between 1984 and, I think, 88, but then it disappeared after that. Like, okay. and there were there were two sequel cartoon series, one of which was really good, but the toys and stuff, they never caught on with the public mind share like the original show did. So, poor Thundercats. People really liked that second show, some people, but the toys didn't sell well enough. Yeah, I was actually a Thundercats character for Halloween one year. The main guy, Lion-O, for third grade. In third grade, that's when I was him, I believe. Uh, I mean, it looks more like Teen Titans Go and stuff. But Teen Titans Go makes a lot of money for them. Oops. Yeah, Bob Jones, that is He-Man. Uh, I don't remember. Like, it, it doesn't especially... Really? Interesting. I mean, that's... Whoa, is this the final boss of the level? Come on, Ethan, let's do this. Do you have any items? Yeah, there's a big one on the far right side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. We have no yeah. items. Yeah, oh it's gosh. a small level, which oh, is nice, golly gosh. so you don't have to mess with it too much. Good, but this is really hard. Oh, it's so mm -hmm. hard. There's so many bullets everywhere. It's a bullet hell twin stick shooter. What are the odds? So just a reminder, this... Yes, we did it! This has been Riddled Corpses EX for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Vita. Really fun twin stick shooter. It's challenging. It's grindy, but it looks good, sounds good, and it's pretty fun. Oh, that would have been cute, Tyranny. That would have been so cute. A little more story stuff. Snarf. Yeah, Snarf is a really annoying, like kid appeal character. You know, a lot of shows have those. A character just for kids appeal. Good luck, everybody. We hope you win. 
We've had some nice donations. We've had some subscribers tonight. It's been a really successful stream. We really appreciate your support, guys, gals, friends, and pals. Oh, hey, Shih Tzu. I forgot to say hi to Shih Tzu. Always good to see you, dude. Keep going, boss. So, I can't imagine not liking the first Ant-Man. However, Ant-Man 2 is probably better. Most people seem to think it's better. What a lot of people like about it is that it's low stakes. You know, like, it's just, it's really just about helping a couple of individuals and that's it. It's not like the world's going to end if they don't do this or whatever. You know, it's just like the characters want to help their friends and that's really nice. And there's lots and lots of great comedy in it and the action sequences are significantly better than the first movie and they're better than Black Panther for sure. Like, they're just, uh, they're fun and elaborate. Okay, then let's give this level a little shot then you can quit. So... Tyler, I, I just think you should be open-minded. Like, you know, you're, the worst Marvel Studios movie is better than the worst Star Wars movie. Easily. Like, a lot. Well, better. yeah, still now. I mean... There's nothing good about the Star Wars movies. I know there's been <laughs> some things. There's, you know, Star Wars movies used to be an event when they came out. Even the prequels were still an event. And it's not anymore, whereas Marvel has established itself as like, oh yeah, three times a year I get to go see this fun movie, and people don't have those huge expectations for it. Yeah, and, and you get a little bit of a reward of... It. You get the little reward of connections with the other movies, you know? Yeah, I'll probably see Ant-Man 2, but the first one was just so weird. Like, I didn't hate it, but it definitely was far, far from my favorite. I bet you'll like this one better, because like I said, it just it came together a lot more smoothly, and it's... You know, it's more cohesive. It's less like, okay, there, there were different fingers in the... Different chefs in the kitchen, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, that might help, for sure. And the villains... Like, the villains are not... Again, Ethan didn't love the villain, but most people really like ghosts and stuff. The villains are... Uh, they're better than Yellow Jacket, that's for sure. Yeah, I didn't like that. I Yellow Jacket was pretty stupid. I like him from uh, the actor from... Corey... Park, yeah, I thought he was pretty really bad. The actor is Corey something, I forget his name. Oh, there's lava. Oh. Don't step in the lava. I like Black Panther. Black Panther was a little long for me, but I like Black Panther. Yeah, good movie. I'm just saying the action is a little subpar because they relied way too much on oh, that, CG like mannequins the, for the fights. the last fight with oh. the, on, like, the train rails, like, yeah. the, it just looked like a cartoon. Yeah, it's right? just so fake. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's a shame. Obviously, they just got in some kind of rush and weren't able to pull right. it. And I'm sure that's what it is, and they didn't expect it to be, like, a billion-dollar maker, you know? <laughs> like, it was just supposed to be kind of like a side movie, and then it just struck a chord with basically all audiences and made they a ton of money. Lot. Like, I think if they had known that, they would have put everything into the visuals. I, I agree. And, like, sometimes you just hit a time limit, and there's nothing... Like, there's nothing you can do if you're really strict about sticking in the, to that release date. Mm -hmm. uh, Lightspeed Halo, I don't know how anyone could feel that way, but Lightspeed Halo likes to talk mess about the Marvel movies for some reason. But Infinity War, like, I know some people don't like it because of the tone or whatever, but I mean... No, it's... no spoilers, I still haven't seen yeah. it. Okay, but it's exciting from start to finish. Like, they establish a dire situation, and it's dire the whole way through. And it has really good action sequences, so I don't know how anyone could be bored during it. I don't, I don't think you really could, unless you're just not engaging with the movie. Maybe he plays with his phone while he watches the movie. Like some annoying people do, such as the one who just got up and left. <laughs> what is Arcade and Survival, Tyler? How do these work? Um, survival's just kind of like a dumb, like... Like, it's just literally survival, and you just keep going, but it doesn't have, like, levels. It's just, like, one map that stays flat and stuff. Oh, well, let's um, try You it. can play it, but you'll die pretty quick. I think arcade is just start to finish. Yep84 didn't like Thanos in the movie. What didn't you like about him, Yep84? I didn't like his, like, his look. They took away his, like, signature costume, and I kind of didn't like him without it, but it wasn't, like, a huge deal to me. No spoilers. Yeah, and no spoilers, obviously. Yeah, it's just wave based. So there's a couple of achievements based on, well, both arcade and uh, survival. But once you get like the really good characters leveled up, you shouldn't have too bad of a time. Oh, nice. Like That's arcade cool. is actually easier than the main game because you start from the early levels and you're really leveled up. Hey. So you just like start stocking up items and health and stuff because you wanted to take damage to like the fourth level. 
Tyler, did Lisa get home and I didn't notice? Or, or somebody on stream, did somebody see Lisa get home and I didn't notice? Because I, I feel pretty silly if I honestly didn't notice her walking by. Um, I didn't, wasn't paying attention. I didn't see anyone yeah, walk by. No worries. But I mean, like, if the booze is not here, it could be because she picked it up and moved it. Or maybe Ethan did. That's too. You know what? I'll just have a drink in the morning. I'm gonna. Even though I beat Slime Son Super Slime Edition for Xbox One, I beat it. Ah, I died. That was quick. Yeah, even though I beat it, there are still three little bonus campaigns, and I still kind of want to mess with those if I can. I'm also supposed to be reviewing E's Memories of Celseta for Steam, which is also on Vita. And uh, isn't that game like way old? Well, I mean, it's a it's a Vita game. You know, like, it's a remake of, a, of, like, a real classic game, but they remade it for, like, modern audiences when they did it for the Vita, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I mean, it's, like, five years old or whatever, but they finally just brought it to Steam in America. You oh. know, because that, that particular that. developer is named Falcom, and they're, they're very indie, you know? Like, they're, like, sort of, like, the longest-running uh, Japanese indie developer, you know? Like, they've been around a real long time. But, but yeah, they they don't always port games to computer as quickly as they should. Although they're, you know, I interviewed them one time for Windows Central, and that was fun. But like they're aware their Steam games actually make pretty good money for them, so they've been better about yeah, supporting I've Steam heard lately. That the Japanese games on Steam have been doing well. Um, Bob Jones, I don't remember the name of the best character. Um, it's a girl that you unlock. It's like the fifth character. You unlock the first four characters. You start with one, you unlock three more. You level them up, and then you get the fifth character, and that's the really good one. Right on. So that's how the unlocking works, everybody. Tyler, have you been playing anything lately? Yeah, I'm ID number nine. Oh, right. <laughs> what a disappointing game that, to be the one you've ever played lately. And then uh, Black Sea Odyssey, which we were talking about. Yeah, when's that review going up? Xbox. Uh, soon, hopefully. I haven't heard from my editor guy. He's traveling back from England to Canada. Oh, wow. So, he's doing that this weekend, so he said that he'd be offline for quite a bit, so... I see. Hopefully, probably, maybe Monday would be my guess now. And he's the only one who can post things? Right. It's just his site. Like, I mean, I'm the second... You know how much I contribute, and I'm still the second highest contributor to the site after oh, okay, him, okay, because so. I, I thought there were several of you working for it. There are, but they all write even less than I do, except for him. Uh, I'll tell you... I'll tell you guys a quick story about like a little about indie game sites, and that's uh, you know like um, that's there's a site N4G that publishes like they they help promote other people's gaming articles, right? And you're familiar with it. Yep. Yeah. I can't vote. I can't. No, I can vote. I can't. I can't post so anything. No, I can't vote until I get, like, three posts voted on. Like, the structure of how the voting works is weird to me. Well, just do it already, gosh. But, but you, I have to post things that get other people's votes before I can... Yeah, so, I mean, like, you can ask me to vote for it, and my vote... For one thing, I've been with the site so long, I get three votes for one, you know? Uh, oh, interesting. So you only need five or ten, depending on what the kind of it's content is. Still dumb, but... yeah. yeah, it's dumb, but it's not... You can work around it, and, like... One way that people work around it is we have little Facebook groups where everybody approves everybody else's stuff. Oh, interesting. Smart. Yeah. And, and I've been part of a couple for a while, but I just left one yesterday because, like, here's the thing. N4G punishes you for approving things that anyone else finds a fault with. So, like, if anybody says this article is not formatted correctly or this article is written poorly... Like, everybody who approved it can actually lose their approval privileges for a few days. It's very annoying. Huh. But, as a result, it encourages you to actually be a little bit thoughtful and cautious about what you approve. You don't just approve everything for no reason. You approve it because it's ready to be approved. And anyway, this, this uh, frequent contributor to one of my groups, the more active of the groups, he... He posted two articles, and they both had numerous grammatical and, like, punctuation errors in the summaries. <laughs> I'm just talking about the summaries, not even the real articles. So it's like, okay, those need to be corrected, because somebody could find fault with them. And I pointed them out politely, and then he's, like, arguing a little bit, and I'm like, I'm an English teacher, I promise you these are real problems. 
and he still was just being a tool about it. So I'm like, what did I say? Uh, okay, just leave him filled with errors then. It was more than worth the effort trying to help you. You know, and I just, I left the group because this one guy was just being a complete tool about it. It's like, I don't understand how anybody could want their articles to just be crap, basically. Just to be filled with writing errors and be super unprofessional and lame. It's like, yeah, it's your personal site or whatever, that doesn't mean you need to not care about the quality of it. Like, especially if you're trying to share it to the world, everybody should care about the quality of what they produce. I just don't understand that mindset. I mean, why? if he doesn't care about the quality of his writing and formatting and grammar and stuff, why would anybody else care about what he wrote? Yeah, no, that's weird. So, that was very frustrating for me. Oh, Brian, you're so silly. Brian's just frustrated because he won't let... He won't let me replace my voice with his. Like, the one thing about editing is you, you do retain the author's voice. You just correct things that are actual errors when editing. Uh, but, you know, like... When people point out errors that I make, you know, such as Brian or you, Tyler, because you've used to edit a lot of my stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I want those errors to be fixed, so I'm happy to find things that are errors and not just a matter of voice. So, I mean, that's important. And most people, you know, like, in both of the groups, when I point things out that are, like, you know, actual errors, usually people are just happy to correct them, because that's how you should be. You should want your stuff to be as good as it possibly can be. And somebody helping you out? For free, that's a nice thing. It's not a bad thing, and you don't treat them rudely. That's so lame. This has been Riddle Corpses EX for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Vita. A very fun game. It's $11.99. <laughs> yeah, they don't quite look like that in the real game, do they? No, they don't. It's a lot like uh, uh, Xenon, Xenon Valkyrie. Valkyrie, which has them you know, ready to tip over to. They're not Bobby at all in this game. so that's Yeah, funny. no one's Bobby at all. But, but it's a nice pixel art style, I like it. it it's a fun, good-looking game. Tyler, thanks a bunch for co-hosting. Yeah, happy to be here. Icky, thank you for running the contest. You're always great at that. We look forward to having Homie Drew run the contest very soon. We appreciate your donations and subscriptions. Thank you all, we love you, and we'll see you next weekend. Whatever you do, don't hate, appreciate. See you guys. Now I'll hold the little SOPs.